Back. It is the voice of Indiana County, WCCS 101.1 FM, AM 1160. Very appropriate that the District Attorney visits us today. District Attorney Bob Manzi is with us. Our conversation brought to you by Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people in uh, this day and age when we're talking so much about school security. Of course, our poll that we just concluded having to do with school security at our website, wccsradio.com. 76% of people saying that schools aren't safe enough. And, and so let's start there. First of all, good morning. Morning, Todd. How are you this morning? Wonderful. It's a beautiful summer day. We're liking this, liking this a whole lot. Uh, but we're, we're concerned and, and people are concerned about school safety. Another incident yesterday. And, and I think one of the things that I take out of what happened yesterday at the Indiana Junior High is the system works uh, when the system is applied. The system works when it's applied and when we have members of the community sharing information about what they see, what they say with law enforcement, with school officials. Uh, when we receive that information, we are able to react appropriately, react preventatively mm -hmm. and, and address the situation before it becomes terrible. Yeah, absolutely. So the situation at the uh, junior high school yesterday um it's very easy to go back, well, not very easy, but it's, it's very common now to go back and look at, okay, what were the signs that people might have seen leading up to a potential incident? Uh, and, uh, and thankfully, we're able to do it in this case uh, before there actually was an incident. Uh, but those signs are out there most times when you have somebody who's disturbed and, uh, and is contemplating doing something terrible. There are many signs out there and there are many steps that members of our community, members of our school and law enforcement are able to take in order to address issues before they become serious matters. Uh, we're looking for uh, children who are maybe not connected uh, with the other children in the group, uh, not involved in activities. Uh, many times we have students that are being bullied or are bullies and are taking steps to separate themselves from the group. Uh, but the reality is, with all of the technology today, uh, what we find in most incidents, in the vast majority of incidents, is there's threats that are made beforehand over Snapchat, over uh, any type of social media. There are statements made to other students, uh, whether it be in school or in a community. And unfortunately, sometimes they're brushed off as uh, just a passing statement uh, or, or something that maybe they're not sure if they should take it serious or not. Uh, in other instances, people will report that to school officials and to law enforcement officials. And what I strongly encourage folks to do is if you hear of any threats, if you see uh, children sending Snapchat pictures of themselves with weapons, report it. Absolutely report it. Call the safe to say immediately, call law enforcement immediately, call my office, call the school. Let us figure out whether it's uh, something nefarious or whether it's something where a child is just being foolish. Mm -hmm. um, it, the, the absolute best scenario is when somebody hears of a threat or is concerned, they raise that concern with the school officials or with the law enforcement officials, and we can address it and find out it's not as serious as it could be um, because that's the way we're able to stop many things from happening. And, and while yesterday's events were certainly seen, what individuals in a community don't realize is we deal with situations uh, with regards to threats with regards to weapons uh, on a daily basis. Yeah. Um, and, and we're able to address it. We're able to address it quickly and properly. And, and the vast majority of time, it's not a situation that people need to be worried about. Um, but as with any job, we're only as good as the information we're receiving. So when, when people see something, they need to say something. Uh, all too often I hear, I don't want someone to get in trouble or I don't want to be involved, or I'm not sure it's that serious. Yeah. The best thing people can do is to call safe to say, call the school, call the police, let us figure it out. And hopefully it's nothing. Um, 
Because the truly the worst case scenario is somebody hears something, hears a threat, sees a picture of a child with a gun, says absolutely nothing, and, and something terrible happens. Interesting. Uh, I don't know if I, it was you I was speaking with a while back or not. I uh, came across a picture from the 1960s of um, a, a school threat situation. Somebody threatened to shoot up a school. Uh, and the principal and a couple of the male students, they just went out to their cars and got their hunting rifles out of the trunks. And there's a picture, a very famous picture of, of the principal and a student sitting there with their hunting rifles on folding chairs at the door of the school. We don't handle things that way anymore, <laughs> and that's a very good thing <laughs> yeah. that, that students don't have guns in their in their cars in the in the parking lot at this school. Uh, but there are systems in place, and uh, schools are doing everything they possibly can think of. Sometimes we don't think of things quick enough, uh, but uh, the see something, say something system is something that works. And yeah, there's a, there are reports that are unsubstantiated, but wouldn't you rather have that? than to not get a report when there is something out there. Absolutely. There, there's been uh, many times where I'm driving somewhere and I see a car that's all over the road, stopping and starting and braking hard and swerving. And I'll pick up my phone and I'll call the local police and say, you may want to look at that car. Uh, maybe it's nothing. Mm -hmm. Maybe that person's having a medical event. Or maybe that person's DUI. But at least... I can provide that information. They can stop that driver and determine what's going on so that nothing bad can happen. Uh, when we get that information, uh, it allows us to, to move forward and take the proper steps. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, yesterday is, is an example. We received information early. We were able to quickly gather information, identify a, a suspect for an event that happened over the weekend, not on school, you know, not at the middle school. Mm -hmm. um, and we had that student away from the other student with law enforcement fairly quickly. So it allowed us to address that event quickly, seriously, appropriately. Um, and with all of the partners between the borough police and the school and my office, address all of the aftermath and all of the, the subsequent events there. Um, parents wanting to come and get their children from the school and take them home for the day. Students that were very upset um, by what they're hearing. Uh, I, I watched guidance counselors sitting on the outside of the school talking with students and addressing their needs. Uh, law enforcement interacting with the kids, being in the group of kids, uh, eyes and ears open. So we're able to get through that information quickly. We're able to identify that quickly. Um, and we had that student away from the other kids really before anybody knew we had them. Yeah. District Attorney Bob Manzi with us here today. Now, in this case, uh, the, the one we're speaking of yesterday, the uh, suspect is a juvenile. Uh, the juvenile system kicks in there, uh, and you work within that system. Uh, when the suspects are adults, of course, there is a system in place for them as well. The criminal justice system here uh, within Indiana County, but within Pennsylvania as a whole, uh, is, I think, uh, pretty effective when it is allowed to do what it what it has to do, um, and and I think that uh, uh, in, in an overall sense that uh, that we do it right. Um, we hate it when when something slips through, uh, and and things do slip through. But um, uh, but I think it's really working well. That being the case, let's take a look at what's happening in the Indiana County court system right now. Uh, you've got uh, cases, of course, before the court. Uh, you've got criminal cases that have been there for a while and are inching along, which as you've told me before, is the way that the system is designed so that things get done correctly. Um, so, so within the court system right now, are there things uh, coming up that, uh, that you are preparing for, uh, large-scale cases, small-scale cases? Absolutely. We, uh, you know, our, our judges and our court administrators done a fantastic job working through the COVID backlog. Um, I've said it before, I'll say it again. When we look at other counties, kind of compare what different counties are doing. We're really a front runner with moving cases through that COVID backlog. Uh, we have trials scheduled through the end of the year, including uh, several murder cases, uh, very serious cases that uh, the goal is by the end of the year, they've been tried, they've gone through the process. Uh, every month uh, we have uh, six or so cases scheduled for jury trials. And functionally what happens 
is many of those cases, um, you know, we have defendants who are really trying to push the limits, saying, mm -hmm. hey, maybe if I call for trial, maybe I'll, I'll get some sort of deal. And this has happened to cases I've been listed as the prosecuting attorney on. They come to the Monday and, and our jurors, unfortunately, take their time out of their work schedule, their family schedule. They follow their duty. They come here to serve on a jury. The defendants come here that Monday and say, hey, Bob, can can I plead to something less or, or get some less jail time? And yeah. I say, no, I say, we're ready. We're ready. We're moving forward. Um, and then they plead guilty and, and try to throw themselves on the mercy of the court. But uh, I believe by finding out that that's the process, um, that, that we're not going to fold. We're ready to try cases. Uh, we're ready to try difficult cases. That's the way the justice system's designed. Mm -hmm. Um, we're finding, you know, less cases are going to trial now that defendants know that's how we're addressing it. We're not just going to fold. Um, and of course, those cases are the ones that end up in court. Many cases do not. Um, and the investigation process is another arm of what it is that you do within the district attorney's office. And I know that there's always something going on. You're not going to divulge what some of those investigations are. Mm -hmm. uh, but for uh, Indiana County, as we head into the summertime, it seems like uh, there's always an increase in drug investigations. Uh, in drug operations, uh, a couple of years ago, it was all about finding meth labs in, in the woods and, and things of that nature. So uh, I know those are going on. I know you keep an eye uh, on communities and uh, places where there might be drug activity going on. And you encourage people to just as we talk about school violence and the potential there, uh, there is, uh, you know, there are drug cases going on and uh, you encourage people to be a part of that solution, too. Absolutely. We, we want to know those houses in your communities where there's weird traffic patterns, where you know there's something suspicious going on. Call our office, call the police. We have our drug task force. We're able to use some investigative tools to quickly determine what's happening there. Uh, and there is always drug investigations going on. I, I always, you know, I don't know that drug dealers are really keeping up with the news. And I'm telling them, Indiana County is not a place to be doing business. Uh, and if you want to continue to do business that way here and, and dealing drugs and, and trying to bring that garbage into our community, we'll get you. Mm -hmm. And we have investigations going on. Maybe you don't see things in the news every day, but we have investigations going on. Our partners in federal law enforcement and state law enforcement, we're all working together. Uh, and, and don't be surprised when you continue to see large scale operations coming to the front page and a lot of drug dealers being put where they need to be in, in state and federal prison. Yeah, absolutely. He is the DA for Indiana County. People want to learn more about what you're doing. You've got a nice website now. You've got a Facebook page as well. And uh, folks are going to be a whole part of the solution here in Indiana County. Absolutely. I mean, this is our county. This isn't just my county, your county. There's 80,000 people in this county. This is our community. It's not the drug dealers community. It's not the criminals community. It's ours. And we're here for our kids and our families and our grandparents to enjoy the life we want. Mr. D.A., have a wonderful day. Thank you, you too. It is the voice of Indiana County, WCCS, 101.1 FM and AM 1160.